How to read schematics. This video will be to demonstrate how to read schematics from Alderaan Industries. The lines in these schematic drawings will change colors throughout this video. Green indicating line one, incoming power. Blue for line two, for when a 240 VAC pump is used. Red for neutral, yellow for an activated load, a power consuming component. And purple to indicate an old path that has become redundant. Watch as the lightning bolts travel from the Line 1 incoming power source to its destination, branching off along the way as the path branches. This is to illustrate how power travels through the control panel, turning on each load it can reach. Now let's take a step back and break down the functions of each component in the schematic. This is a circuit breaker and it is currently turned off. When there is power running to the circuit breaker, that power cannot travel through because the contacts are open. When the circuit breaker is turned on, closing the contacts, then the power passes through the circuit breaker. Here we have a closed circuit breaker with two fuses following after. These fuses are currently in working condition and power can travel through them. In the case where the fuse happens to break, the power coming from line 1 will no longer be able to pass through F1. This is the schematic symbol for a float switch. Currently, the contacts are open. When there is power running to the float, that power cannot travel through because the contacts are open. As the water rises, the metal ball in the float will push on the micro switch, causing the float switch to close its contacts, allowing the power to bridge through the switch. As the water lowers, the metal ball in the float will roll away from the micro switch, causing the float switch to open its contacts, breaking the connection. This is the handoff auto switch, or HOA switch. Currently, it's in the off position. When the panel has power, the power is applied at the hand position and conditional at the auto position, when other components send power that way. When the panel is switched from off mode to hand mode, the power will pass through the switch, engaging the pump. Again, the power leading to the auto position is conditional. For this power to pass through the switch to engage the pump, the switch must be moved into the auto position. In this simple schematic example, we have two loads, G1, which is the pump run indicator, which is a green light, and M1, which is a magnetic contactor coil. Currently, the HOA switch is in the off position, disconnecting the power from reaching the loads. When it is switched to the hand position, the power will reach G1, turning the green light on, and M1, engaging the magnetic contactor. Here in this schematic, we have a circuit breaker, fuse, two float switches, the latching contacts, the symbol labeled M1 on the left, the HOA switch in the auto position, the green pump run indicator, and the magnetic contactor coil, the symbol labeled M1 on the right. When power is connected to the panel in its current state, the power will not pass through the circuit breaker. When the circuit breaker is turned on, the power will pass through the circuit breaker and end at float switch one, the off float. The panel will remain this way until the water rises. When the water rises, the contacts close in the float switch, allowing the power to travel to the start float and also the contactor. The power cannot pass through the contactor yet as it needs to reach the contactor coil first for the contacts to close in M1. Again, notice that the HOA switch is in the auto position. As the water rises, the contacts will close in the start float, allowing the power to pass through and reach G1 and M1, closing the contacts in the M1 contactor. Notice that the path through the start float is now purple. Now that the M1 latching contacts are closed, the path through the switch has become redundant. As the water level drops, the start float drops, opening its contacts. Power is still able to pass through the M1 latching contacts as the M1 coil is still receiving power. As the water level continues to drop, 
the off-float drops, breaking the connection leading to G1 and M1. Now let's add the pump to the schematic. Here we'll be focusing primarily on the upper portion of the schematic leading to the pump. Two things to note. First, the pump power in this example is 230 VAC, so power will be sent through both lines leading to the pump. Secondly, notice that there is an additional 3M1 latching contacts leading to the pump. These will also activate when the power in the control panel reaches the M1 contactor coil. When the incoming pump and control power are connected, line one and line two will stop at the circuit breaker as it is turned off. When the circuit breaker is turned on, line one and two pass through the circuit breaker and wait at the M1 latching contacts. As the water rises, the off float closes. As the water continues to rise, the start float closes and the control power reaches the M1 coil, closing all the M1 latching contacts, allowing line one and line two to reach the pump and turn it on. Now that the pump is pumping out water, the water level will begin to drop and the start float will drop opening its contacts. The pump will remain on until the off float drops cutting power to the M1 coil. This schematic is an example of the alarming portion in a control panel. The new components are the test silence switch, alarm beacon, control relay contacts, buzzer, and the control relay coil. Currently, the circuit breaker is turned off. When the panel is connected to an incoming power source, the power will stop at the circuit breaker. When the circuit breaker is switched on, closing its contacts, line one power will then reach the alarm float and the test side at the test silence switch. In proper order, the alarm float would be above the off and start float, alerting the user if the water level is too high. As the water rises, rising past the start float and lifts the alarm float, the alarm float will close its contacts and let power pass through, activating the alarm beacon and buzzer. Now an alarming event is activated. Notice that power is able to reach the buzzer by passing through the closed contacts in CR1. If the test silence switch is moved into the silence position, the power can now reach the CR1 coil, causing the CR1 latching contacts to switch, cutting power to the buzzer, thus making it silent. Now the power running through the switch is redundant. In reality, the test silence switch is a momentary switch, so when it is flicked into silence, immediately after it will return back into its normal position, breaking the connection. As the water begins to drop, the alarm float will drop cutting power to the beacon and the CR1 coil. If the buzzer was not silenced before, power to the buzzer would be cut instead of the CR1 coil. In this final example, we will be bringing it all together, including a control panel in the upper right and a wastewater tank in the lower right. As for the schematic, we have three main portions put together. In the upper portion of the schematic is the pump circuit. In this example, we will be showing a 120 VAC pump instead of a 230 VAC pump, meaning it will have a neutral line instead of line two. In the middle is the pump activation portion, and then at the bottom is the high alarm portion. When the incoming power is connected inside the panel, the power will stop at each circuit breaker since they are turned off. When CB2 is turned on, the power can now reach the off float, the alarm float, the HOA switch, and the test silence switch. When the circuit breaker leading to the pump is turned on, line one and neutral can reach the M1 latching contacts. With the HOA switch in the auto position, the control panel is ready to perform its functions when needed. As the water rises in the tank, notice that the off float begins to tip up, closing its contacts. Now power has reached the M1 latching contacts and the start float switch, waiting for the contacts to close. As the water continues to rise, the start float tips up and its contacts close, allowing the power to reach the M1 coil and the green pump run indicator. Now that the M1 coil is activated, all the M1 latching contacts are closed and now the pump is running. Also notice on the control panel that the green light, which is G1, is turned on, indicating the pump is running. Now that the pump is pumping water out, the water level begins to drop, causing the float switches to go down, cutting the power when the off float goes down. Now let's have the tank fill up again, raising past the start float, lifting the alarm float, closing its contacts. Now that the power has reached the buzzer and the beacon, 
they are activated. When the test silence switch is flicked down to silence, power is able to reach the CR1 coil, switching the CR1 contacts cutting power leading to the buzzer. Notice that nothing else is affected when this is done. When the HOA switch is moved into the hand position, the green pump run indicator and M1 contactor coil are activated, closing all the M1 latching contacts, giving the pump its power. Let's play this example one last time. Thanks for watching.